Hey guys, Eddie here from Delane Property. Today I'm very excited to do another video here for you guys. I have, it's been quite a while since we jumped on here and did a couple videos, but today I really wanted to talk about something very important, a topic about property investing from my experience. The topic that we're gonna talk about today is basically five reasons why you should not invest in property and what are the five downsides of actually owning investment properties and building a property portfolio. So I thought I'd do this video because I've speak with hundreds and you know thousands of property investors and you know want to be property investors and people that you know might have one or two and they really want to bridge the gap and get to six, eight, ten, twenty, etc investment properties in their portfolio. So a lot of people that are very excited about property investing and they want to build a portfolio, create that passive income, set themselves up for retirement, etc., etc. But a lot of people don't talk about the bad sides of property investing. And today I want to be, be you know, right out there and say, yes, there is good sides and there's bad sides. And it would, I think it's wrong for people to only, you know, publicize the, the really good things about property investing because there's great, you know, things about property investing. Um, but there's also the behind the scenes and bad things. So. One of the first things I want to talk about, so one of the five things that aren't the best with property investing and why five reasons why I would recommend for people to not property invest is one of, one of the first ones is dealing with stress. So a lot of property investors, and you know, I've said it before that property investing isn't that stressful. However, that is, when I have said property investing isn't that stressful and it's very easy to maintain all these properties and you know, deal with all the, sometimes you'll have issues that come up, sometimes you won't. And you know, dealing with tenants, dealing with property managers, dealing with insurances, dealing with banks, dealing with the bills, dealing with council rates and water rates and management fees and insurance and strata, et cetera, et cetera. Dealing with ongoing maintenance costs, doing renovations, that kind of stuff. When issues arrive, that can, for some people, they can classify that as being very stressful. So, one thing that I've learned over the past 10 years is just you know, adapting and dealing with stress, dealing with issues that come up. And it's been a, quite a big journey because in the beginning, when I first had two, three, four properties, and I was on less than minimum wage, you know, trying to really battle it out to get to six, get to 10 and you know, all that kind of stuff. That was some of the hardest times ever because from a person that goes from owning no properties then to one, to two, to three, to four, it is a mindset change. And everyone says mindset and rambles on about that. I don't wanna do that, but it kind of really is a big mindset shift of what you go through because you're dealing with a lot more responsibility for one. So with every property that you buy, you have things like council rates, water rates, management fees and insurance and all that kind of stuff that you have to maintain, you have to deal with. If you're gonna personally, and in the beginning, a lot of the time it's the person themselves having to do with it. They can offload as much stuff to a property manager as possible, you know, and that over the years, that's what I've done. I've delegated that stuff to other people and because I've had no other choice but to consistently grow and try to put procedures and processes in place. But it is very uncomfortable. You know, when you're first building that portfolio and you get to two to three, you know, you're managing all these mortgages that are coming out, you know, for most people that get loans on them, some people buy them outright, but you know, for the average person, a lot of people get loans on them. As well as council rates coming in, if you could see the amount of council rates and bills that I get on a weekly basis that arrive to the post office or my doorstep, you know, council rates and water rates and all this kind of stuff from properties that, I've, that I personally own in Brisbane, in Adelaide, in Sydney, in you know, Cairns, in Gold Coast, all, all around Australia, all these properties and all the mails coming in, all the council rates and all that other kind of stuff. And a lot of the time now I offload that to a property manager. But I guess to summarize, it is. It can be stressful, and if a if a person is not willing to make the sacrifices they need to make to get where they want to be, well, then I personally feel you shouldn't be investing in property, because 
uh, you know, you will have, you know, a lot of the times you can be very lucky and issues don't arise for years and years and years. But as an example, if a hot water heater breaks, that might be $1,000 or $1,500. If you're gonna, you know, blow up and, you know, get frustrated and cry and scream about something that happens, then maybe property investing isn't for you. So, you know, and in the beginning, when I first had three, four properties, I, that, that's how I would react. I'd be like, oh no, how am I gonna pay for this? Get really pissed off and frustrated and take it out on other people and all that kind of stuff and be short of money and everything. But nowadays, I think of the long-term picture and the long-term goal. If things come up, these kind of properties, when you own investor properties, they are a tax deduction. So, you know, all kind of expenses and things like that, you can claim bits of portions of that back off your taxable income, depending on how you're, you know, you, how you structure things and how your accountant structures things and all that kind of stuff. But when you buy a property to live in and buy a principal place of residence, none of that's a tax deduction. So you're going to get tax deductions on paying those bills. But I guess it's the long term you know, goal, you've got to go through the stress to get the success. And that's one of the biggest things. So number one, to summarize, is number two, is stress. Two is just dealing with problem. problems. If you don't want to deal with problems, you probably shouldn't be investing in property or trying to build a portfolio because problems are going to arise. <laughs> um, so that's a big thing. I'll keep that one short and sweet, but you know, first one's stress, second one's problems, and problems lead to stress, etc. So they go hand in hand. But um, Number three, I suppose, would be being in uncomfortable situations. So when I was, when I'm still building my portfolio, I'm at 16 properties at the moment. When a person is building a portfolio, they are taking out debt usually, they are going to see banks, they are under a lot of pressure a lot of the times, they have to deal with all the rates and issues that may arise, deal with the property managers. That, can be uncomfortable situations because if a person is a, hasn't done something before, then usually it's uncomfortable doing that. You know, if they're dealing with those issues, it's they're in uncomfortable situations. So there's a lot of, I guess, YouTube videos and you know things like that that say if you want to grow, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. To be comfortable, there is no growth when that that happens when you're comfortable. So. If you're a property investor and you're watching this and you've got two, you've got three, maybe you've got five or whatever, it is very normal to feel like this. To deal with the stress, you know, you've got to go through, you've got to push through that pain and continue expanding and focus on the long-term goal. If you're looking to build a portfolio that's going to create that income, you know, you want to be in a position in five, ten, seven, you know, seven, ten years from now where you're going to have $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 in passive income coming in from your portfolio. In the beginning stages, it is gonna hurt a lot of the times. So I don't wanna scare everyone off property investing. I'm gonna to try to make another video that has all the positive things about property investing, such as the tax deductions, the growth, the rental yield, you know, instant equity, buying below, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it's important to speak about these things because you know you want to, I want to share my experience with what I've had over the past 10 years with other people so that can at least help them or make them think that, you know, they're not going crazy with dealing with these issues. So third one is being with feeling uncomfortable. When you're in an uncomfortable situation, and I feel uncomfortable a lot of the times when I'm trying to push through things, uh, through property investing, with business, with, you know, work in general, with family stuff, trying to always get to the next level. A lot of times you feel uncomfortable, but that's how you grow. So that's number three. Number four, it kind of goes in hand in hand with all the other ones, but it's just, it is it is work. In the beginning stages, yes, you can put processes and procedures in place to streamline things, but only property can be work. If, you know, it's not all, you know, sunshines and fairy tales and rainbows and lollipops and all that kind of stuff, you do have to put in work. And, you know, if you're focusing on the long-term goal, you know, it's definitely worth it. If you're gonna short-term pain, long-term gain, it's definitely worth it. So that's four. Number five, it goes hand in hand with all of them again, but responsibilities. If you don't want to have responsibilities, if you just wanna coast through life, I guess, but you're gonna have responsibilities, 
regardless of whether you invest in property or not. But investing in property and or whatever you decide to invest in, investing and taking on those responsibilities is you know, doing the mature thing, trying to set yourself up for the future and taking the financial responsibility for your situation. So that's a little bit about you know, my mindset, my experience. Those are the five rough key things that reasons why you should not invest in property or things that you should at least be aware of before you start investing in property. But there's definitely, from my opinion, my experience, there's way more pros than the cons. You gotta deal with the stress to get the success. And thanks for watching guys, and I'll talk to you next video. Bye.